This month will mark 45 years since Mount St. Helens erupted. You'll remember the volcano exploded back on May 18, 1980, blasting rocks horizontally, destroying centuries of forest growth in the span of several minutes, and nine hours of explosive volcanic activity ensued. In all, 57 people died in that eruption, and it also forever altered the landscape and what we know about volcanoes. So this morning, we're talking all about the importance of becoming familiar with our state's five active volcanoes. Meteorologist George Waldenberger joins us from the Arc Lounge with Brian Turbush, the Volcano Program Manager with the Washington Emergency Management Division. George, take it away. Thank you. Brian, we are so excited to talk with you today on Arc Seattle. I first want to dive into the eruption of Mount St. Helens. It's hard to believe it's been 45 years since that explosion. Can you start by walking us through what happened and how did the eruption of Mount St. Helens change our perspective on volcanoes? Absolutely. And thank you. So as you know, 45 years ago, starting back in March of that year, um, we started seeing signs that the volcano was potentially going to erupt. And actually, if you follow the USGS accounts on social media right now, um, you can see they do a day-by-day -day activity of what they were seeing in the monitoring. So this did give warning before it erupted, like all of our well-monitored volcanoes will. Um, but on the morning of May 18th, this bulge they've been watching on the north flank, um, it gave way in a massive landslide and earthquake that caused, it just released all the pressure on the magma that had been building in the dome there. And as, as was mentioned, you see in that fascinating push footage from the Rosenquist images, just this landslide turning into the, the pressure releasing and all of these clouds of gases of ash just escaping in this massive eruption, the, the lateral blast that happened then. Um, and ultimately, this is something at that time the geologists and volcanologists were not aware of that could happen at a volcano. So we weren't prepared for that to happen. We are now. And actually, one thing that was learned from this eruption is going back, you can look at the type of terrain that happened there and look at this sector collapse of the volcano where this landslide happened and see that this has happened at other volcanoes around the world. They've seen this at Mount Shasta in California. They know it's done this before as well. And you can look at some old deposits from um, even Mount Rainier. You know, it's had this type of sector collapse and massive landslide, although with a much smaller explosion. Um, and then other volcanoes in Russia and um, other places around the world. So we learned a lot from just the way this volcano erupted. It took us by surprise at that time, but it will not take us by surprise again at another volcano because we know it's a possibility now. Absolutely. And as you said, these are tremendous learning experiences. And we walk away from this 45 years later, and May is actually Volcano Awareness Month. So why is it important for Washingtonians to become familiar with our state's five active volcanoes? There's five active volcanoes here, and there's also five active volcanoes in the state of Oregon, right? Yeah, five or more in Oregon. I don't know those ones as well, but uh, they, they do have a good number there as well. So, um, yeah, this is a fantastic time to familiarize yourself with them while they're not erupting. Um, learn about these volcanoes, learn about what their hazards are, learn about the huge impact they've had on the culture of this state for the people who've lived here for thousands of years, for the people that live here now, um, how important they are to just our ecosystems and environment. This is they're where the streams start that are important for all the salmon that live here and for our recreation and everything. But what we want to focus on this month is, of course, um, getting prepared now. Understand where those hazards will impact you. And if you live, work, or play in one of these volcano hazard zones, what you can do to get prepared now, like building your go kit and learning your evacuation route. So you can do that very quickly. Um, in the event that a lahar or volcanic mud flow is coming down, you want to be able to evacuate really quickly. That's going to be a stressful situation, and it could happen in the middle of the night. So the more you practice, the more you get that evacuation route into muscle memory, the faster you can walk that to safety. Um, and we see like the drills that are happening in the city of Ordon um, that have happened in Pierce County and different um, times of the year. Um, the kids can even practice these drills. They can do them in the time that they have available to evacuate from Alahar. So you can too, but the practice is really going to help. Um, so yeah, just take that time to learn about your hazards and how you can be prepared because the idea of a volcanic eruption, watching that video we just saw at Mount St. Helens seems like it's something so big you couldn't do anything about it. But you absolutely can. And getting prepared now is the key to figuring that out. Also really important to understand how are you going to hear that something is going on at the volcano? I mentioned earlier that these aren't going to erupt without warning. Even that Mount St. Helens massive one, we had a month and a half 
where the scientists knew something was going on. So take some time now to learn how you're going to be alerted. Um, I highly recommend the USGS's Volcano Notification Service, or VNS. Um, you can get information right from them the second something changes at one of our volcanoes. Um, so if you want to be informed by the people who are watching it, that's really important, but also sign up for your local alerts because they will send things about when you need to evacuate. So look at your county's emergency management page or um, mil.wa.gov slash alerts. We have a page um, from Washington Emergency Management that lists all of those so you can subscribe right there. Yeah, very good information, Brian. Knowing is half the battle. And one thing we do know that if Mount Rainier were to erupt, one of the biggest threats would be Lahars. And you just touched on how some of the nearby communities in the foothills that would be subject to a potential risk, like Ording, Enumclaw, Puyallup, some of these communities actually have Lahar drills. So on this note, as we mentioned, uh, May 18th is Mount St. Helens erupt diversity. <laughs> Eruptiversity, eruptiversary. Okay, that's a tough word to say. It's a mixture of it eruption is. and <laughs> anniversary. <laughs> but what's being done to commem commemorate this eruption? Well, again, the whole month we're going to have some activities. Um, leading up to that, we're going to do an Ask Me Anything on Reddit, where you can talk to the volcano scientists and preparedness experts in the area to learn. Ask any of those burning questions you've had about volcanoes. We, we have to say that. Um, but think about things you've never wanted to ask before, maybe about your favorite volcano disaster movie or just about being prepared and why do volcanoes do things like that. So that's going to be May 15th on um, the Reddit social media platforms, Ask Me Anything. Um, we will share a link to that afterwards on our website at Washington Emergency Management so that you can see what the responses are and read through them, even if you don't interact on there. Um, but on the day of, it's a fantastic day. The Visitor Center um, at Coldwater Science and Learning Center up by Mount St. Helens is going to be open. Um, can't promise it won't be cloudy, but when it's not cloudy, there's a fantastic view of Mount St. Helens from there. It's an excellent time to go up and ask the rangers and any experts about um, just the eruption and learn more about it and learn more about the fascinating landscape afterwards um, that happened out of this tragic eruption. Yeah, it is tragic, although fascinating. And uh, so as we know, during the next eruption, big eruption, uh, likely magma is making its way toward the top of the volcano, and that can cause little earthquakes, that can cause movements, and the USGS and scientists are monitoring this, so they would have pretty good notice before a big eruption. So tell us a little bit more about how this volcano monitoring works. Yeah, so the USGS Cascades Volcano Observatory located in Vancouver. Um, and if you're in that area or want to go visit, they actually have an open house this Saturday, May 10th. Might be fun to go down there and learn about the observatory and how they do it from there. Um, they even said you can bring your favorite rock and let them tell you more about it. Um, which is always fun to do. Um, but yes, they and the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network working at the University of Washington help monitor all the volcanoes in Washington and Oregon. Um, as you mentioned, they have seismometers, which measure um, any shaking that the ground makes. Um, there are things like GPS on there to measure whether the volcano is inflating, um, because if there's magma coming in, it's going to blow up a little bit. Um, very small, very hard to detect, um, but it, it is detectable by these delicate instruments. And then also measuring things like gases that are coming out of the volcano, um, measuring the temperature of the streams, um, all of these things. But it's really important that these are measured over time. I like to think of it as a, going to the doctor over time. Um, you know you get your heartbeat, you get your blood pressure, and what you're looking for when you go to year to year is a change in those, because that might be what indicates that something is wrong. Um, so what they're doing is watching year to year. The more instruments on a volcano, the better. So Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens are two of the most well-monitored volcanoes, not just in the U.S., but on the planet, because we know about the hazards they represent. But our other ones are also well-monitored. Um, Glacier Peak, Mount Adams, and Mount Baker are all monitored volcanoes. So none of them are going to erupt without warning. Um, but they're all in a state that is normal right now. It's their background activity. There are earthquakes at Mount St. Helens, and there are earthquakes at Mount Rainier every day. There's several, um, but that's normal for the volcano. There's even seasonal swarms of earthquakes. That's normal, too. What they're looking for is something abnormal, and uh, just having all this monitoring equipment will help them determine what that is. And the first thing they're going to do when they detect something abnormal is send out to everybody subscribed to the Volcano Notification Service um, and your local responders and everything. 
um, this volcano notification information statement to let you know we are observing this. We are watching really closely. Um, yeah, all of our volcanoes are normal right now. But they're in a state of just add magma. If that magma starts moving in, they could move towards eruption, which could be over a period of days, weeks, months, or maybe even years before it erupts if it does. So just got to think about getting ready for that uncertainty as well. But again, now is the best time to get prepared, not when that volcano goes into a state of unrest. So think about that this month as you're being more aware of your volcanoes and their hazards. So think, think about how to prepare now. Yeah, now is the time, Brian. And briefly, can you remind us this volcano notification service? Uh, you want people to download this onto their apps, onto their phone? Um, this is a service you can just subscribe to on the USGS website. Okay. It will email you. Okay, um, perfect. emails everybody at the same time. So yes. um, volcano notification service. All right, thank you. And as you said, we are looking for changes. There's always activity on these volcanoes. We're looking in changes day to day, week to week. And that may indicate a sign that an eruption may be on the way. Thank you, Brian, for joining us. Uh, Stephen, Tyra, so yeah, Stephen, Tyra, how cool was that? I'm glad to hear things are just kind of calm right now. Calm. We don't want any changes. Yeah, mm. we, li we like the term normal, don't we? Yes. yes. Let's keep it that way for a while. <laughs> it's interesting that uh, the Cascades are a volcanic arc, and they're active from British Columbia all the way down through Washington, Oregon, and Northern California. And that entire mountain chain was built or is actively being built as volcanoes. So we just have to be prepared for more. That's right. Be prepared is the key. Thanks, George. Thank yes, you, thank George. you. To learn more about the Mount St. Helens eruptions and volcano preparedness, we made it easy for you. Just go ahead and scan that QR code on your screen. That will take you directly to comonews.com slash hotlinks. From there, you're going to find a link to the Washington Emergency Management Division's website. You're also going to find information on how they're commemorating that 45th eruptiversary. That's a hard word. Eruptiversary. All right. <laughs>